And then on top of that, they insult the gamer. And today we have to talk about Electronic Arts because they essentially said that you and I downright suck. Like you guys honestly think that the intern running the EA Twitter account hates people that play single player games? Like come on. You know, maybe it was their intention to say we hate single player games and we hate everyone that plays them. You know, that might be the case. I have no real idea, but the more likely scenario, at least in my mind, is the fact that they just kind of maybe worded it poorly and their intention was to imply that, oh, if the person only plays single player games, you can't ever play with them, which I'm kind of thinking is more of the case. For the longest time, EA has continued to declare time and again that single player games are no longer as relevant as they once used to be, that live services are the way of the future. You know, sometimes there's just these game studios that suck. They constantly make games that are filled with microtransactions, that are overly predatory, and then on top of that, they insult the gamer. I am giving Gran Turismo 7 a 9.5 out of 10. And today, we have to talk about Electronic Arts because they essentially said that you and I downright suck. They're actually bagging on their customers. It, it does make the blood boil a little bit, especially coming from EA, but... What's up gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today because we're going to be talking about something that I think is probably one of the most unintentionally funny situations I've seen in quite some time because as you guys know on YouTube, it's a very common trend for gaming news channels to be oh so virtuous and tell us how bad companies are, whether it be Activision, Blizzard, EA, Ubisoft, CD Projekt Red, every one of these channels, including myself to some degree, always looks forward to the ability to call out everyone's least favorite company of the week on their bullshit. And well, in the pursuit of this, more often than not, it blows something out of proportion to an extent that makes zero fucking sense and makes the people calling out the company look like the idiots. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at here today. Now, just for context, EA put out a tweet, they're a 10, but they only like single player games. Now, gather round old people on the internet because I'm going to fill you in on a little something here. This is a very common meme that's been going around the internet and basically is saying like, oh, you know, they're great and all, but they have one flaw. And that flaw in this case is that they only play single player games. Now, what does the Reddit hate mob that looks for any reason to shit on EA for come to the conclusion? Well, obviously EA hates single player games, even though EA releases single player games every single year that do very well for them. But apparently they hate single player games and the people that play them, man. And this tweet is the definitive proof to prove it once and for all, man. EA absolutely hates you. Now, in keeping in the spirit of this wonderful Reddit moment... I think almost everybody in this situation covering it belongs in a certain subreddit called r slash woosh because these motherfuckers really do not get it. Either they're just that stupid or they're that blinded by their hatred for a company or, you know, the desire for ad revenue to call out EA for something else. But that's beside the point because let me reveal to you guys the real intention of this tweet. They're a 10, but they only play single player games. Now, we have two options of how to interpret this tweet. Is it EA? declaring their absolute hatred for the people that play single player games and the games themselves? Or could it be, I don't know, the more likely scenario that it's saying like, you know, this person's great and all, but they only play single player games, so I would never really be able to play video games with them. Oh my god, dude, because you can only play single player games by yourself. And if you finally find a gamer girl that you can date, you might want to play multiplayer games with them. Oh my god, dude, that took me a total of 1.5 
five seconds to figure that out. You know, if these motherfuckers would have put in just a fraction of the time it took them to record their dog shit videos, they could have literally come to this conclusion if they just took the blinders off for a second. Like, this entire thing has gotten blown so much out of proportion, it's actually fucking hilarious, dude. Like, you guys honestly think that the intern running the EA Twitter account hates people that play single player games? Like, come on. You know, sometimes there's just these game studios that suck. They constantly make games that are filled with microtransactions, that are overly predatory, and then on top of that, they insult the gamer. I don't know, that kind of sounds familiar. I am giving Gran Turismo 7 a 9.5 out of 10. Dreamcast guy, my dude, you really just need to keep that same energy. They insult the gamer. And today, we have to talk about Electronic Arts because they essentially said that you and I downright suck. Again, I can't tell if he's just being that dishonest or downright stupid because that's literally not what they said. They're actually bagging on their customers. Dude, the only one that should be insulted in all of this is my fucking intelligence. Holy shit. And I want to discuss this because it's just too hilarious to watch how the entire internet is currently roasting Electronic Arts. I don't know, I'm leaning more towards the case that the entire internet can't understand a joke. Including some of their own employees. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here. It is kind of sad that What's Up Gamers is not at the beginning of every video anymore. You know, it just really puts a smile on my face. But now, let's get into the video games. So this tweet went out yesterday afternoon and pretty much instantly everybody pounced on it because of just the pinnacle levels of cringe. They're a 10, but they only like playing single player games. So this has been this new meme format where you say that somebody's a 10 except for one major flaw. Something like, uh, they're really into your hobbies, but they're addicted to cocaine. Oddly specific, are you speaking from experience there, Dreamcast guy? Like, what the fuck? But I mean, at least Dreamcast guy understands the basic premise of this meme, okay? You know, I will give him credit for that one because I think a lot of people don't. They really like working out, but they're horribly addicted to steroids. You know, something where like, it's a person who's super, super good and ultra compatible, except for one extremely bad quality. To Electronic Arts, that means playing single player games is a bad character flaw. Or hear me out, guys, it's the fact that they only play single player, so you'd never be able to play video games with them. What do you think is the more likely scenario from a company that literally sells single player games? Hmm, I wonder. What the heck? Now, Every comment is completely roasting them, including some of their top employees and stuff, but I want to quickly mention why you may not understand the context of this. Yeah, I'm the one who doesn't understand the context of this. Electronic Arts has now spent the last decade claiming that single player games suck, that they're unpopular, that nobody wants them, and they've straight up even said they're not going to make them. This is an article from 10 years ago where the head of EA was very proudly saying we're not even going to publish single player games because to us, they're absolutely worthless. Yeah, if we take a look at who actually wrote this quote unquote article, I don't really think I would use them as a credible source. Also, I guess we're not showing the quote now. You know, at least a young yes credit, he at least showed the quote. In fact, here we have an article from New Salad Destructory from none other than James Stephanie Sterling, whose headline reads, EA, single player games are finished. That is exactly what was stated by an EA executive, EA Games President Frank Jubot, who said, quote, I volunteer you to speak to EA studio heads, they'll tell you the same thing. They're very comfortable moving the discussion towards how we make connected gameplay via cooperative or multiplayer or online services as opposed to fire and forget, package goods only, single player, 25 hours and you're out. I think that model is finished. Online is where the innovation and the action is at, were his exact words. 12 years ago, 12 years ago, 12 years ago. So I love how this always comes back to like this old ass quote from literally 12 years ago that's completely out of date if EA's track record over the past couple years has proved anything. Like they've literally doubled down on single player games at this point. And on top of that, they make some pretty damn good ones too. But what I really don't like about this tweet is the fact that it ignores the context that back in 2010, literally every single game studio that you could think of was pushing for some sort sort of online functionality. Remember Sony, you know, as these people love to refer to them as like the safe haven for single player story driven experiences? Well, back in 2010 in that time period, Sony was releasing games with forced multiplayer all the time.
time. Case in point, God of War Ascension. Why did God of War need a fucking team deathmatch multiplayer game mode? I mean, shit, dude, Uncharted 3 even had an online pass. Remember those wonderful things that EA created? Well, Sony was on board with that too. So yes, back in 2010, most game studios believed that multiplayer co-op and online functionality was a necessity and that the traditional format for video games was going the way of the dinosaur. They were proven incorrect and have never made a statement like that since, which is why the only quote people can ever direct you to is from 12 fucking years ago. Trust me, I don't like the shit that EA pulls just as much as anyone else, but when you're pulling this type of shit out of your ass, it just makes you look dumb. And Yong does kind of acknowledge this, but still doubles down. And that's a philosophy that really hasn't fully gone away. While EA has been more open to releasing single-player games, seeing the successes of plenty of other single-player titles, EA's ideal future is still one where they can continue to keep players engaged in one product and infinitely monetize that one product. I don't know if it's just me, but it sounds like he's literally describing the dream situation for any company to ever exist on planet Earth, but hey, that's just me. But anyway, back to our boy Dreamcast guy. And here we are in the year of our Lord, 2022, and they're still doubling down on it. Now, yeah, that's why they literally announced that new single player Star Wars game, right? I find it funny that everybody, this is Jake Baldino saying he's going to have to chug a beer while filming his Friday show. Look, horror games community, EA honey, it's not too late to delete this. Vince Zampella. Now, th now, I just want to make this clear. I love Vince Zampella. I think he's one of the best game developers of all time. He's the mind behind Call of Duty, Titanfall, Medal of Honor to an extent. I mean, the dude makes some of the best video games that we've ever played in the first person shooter genre. And now he's working on Battlefield as well, too. So I'm really excited to see where he takes that. But I guess he was just caught lacking this time around. This guy, obviously is the head of Respawn Entertainment. This dude is such a major figurehead of the entirety of the gaming industry. This guy is directly responsible for the creation of some major franchises, but most notably recently he made Jedi Fallen Order, which was an overwhelming success for Electronic Arts, which is a fully single player game. That sold so many copies, they're already greenlighting a big sequel, which is coming out next year. Wait, I thought this tweet was definitive proof that they hated single player games and all the people that played them, bro. Why would they greenlight another single player Star Wars game if that was true? Like this tweet is in direct contradiction to that game even existing in the first place, Dreamcast guy. Like what's going on here? I thought for the past decade, they've literally just been maniacally rubbing their hands together, plotting the downfall of single player games. They're basically spitting in the face of one of their top employees just to try and dunk on gamers. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in this situation. Now look, I like this. People saying you dropped your crown king with a big old trash can. <laughs> this the thing I thought was actually the best roast of all. You can see this is an absolute fire tweet. I'm gonna like that. These are all the multiplayer, very great specific games created by Electronic Arts in the last couple of years. Oh yeah, Anthem. Oh, mm, unfortunately, that's got a 3.5. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, Battlefield 5. Oh, a 2.6. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, Battlefield 2042. Oh, a 2 out of 10. Maybe you constantly rushing these games that are filled with microtransactions, unfinished stories, completely hollow worlds, not even good multiplayer combat, maybe you should focus on single player games because that is what's actually selling for you. No, the games that make them the most money are FIFA, Battlefield, and Madden, which surprisingly enough, Battlefield 2042 was still in the top 10 best selling games of 2022. So, you know, you can throw out user ratings all you want, but the fact is they're still making fucking money. And if I'm a game studio, I'm gonna be more concerned with how much cash is coming in than a fucking Metacritic score. Now that being said, their single player games that they have released have done well critically and sales wise, so I don't really see a problem with them doing both, which is their current strategy right now. So again, you're basically straw manning this entire thing, saying that they're declaring war against single player games. They never want to create them when EA literally has a whole slew of single player games announced to be coming out in the next few years. Now, I find this funny. People look at this. Understandable, you're unfamiliar with the concept of tens. Jesus Christ, that's such a savage roast. Dreamcast guy must have some of the most virgin ears on planet Earth if he thinks that's a savage roast. I mean, 
Let's face it, there hasn't been a 10 out of 10 game in so freaking long from Electronic Arts because they just rush out the lowest quality garbage they possibly can, but didn't their game It Takes Two literally fucking win game of the year last year? I think that's about as close to a 10 out of 10 as you can get. Damn. This is such a good roast, look at this, EA continuing to show how to, out of touch they are. Now this is what I like, is people talking about how not only do their games keep getting lower and lower and lower review scores, look at that, 1.6, even one of their freaking NFL games, points, zero sick, Jesus Christ. Now here's what's interesting, here are actual Electronic Arts cover games. These I think it is kind of funny he's referencing Mass Effect but ignored it in the negative category. Gotta fit that narrative. These are big AAA titles that they were funded and published and developed everything from the top by Electronic Arts. And here we go, Mass Effect, EA right there on the cover, 94 on Metacritic. Freaking Mass Effect 3, 90 on Metacritic. Freaking Titanfall, 90 on Metacritic. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, 81 on Metacritic. Yo, why is he comparing the user scores and the critic score? The critic score on all of those games with low user scores were way higher than the actual user score was, which I think this is fucking hilarious at this point too, because Titanfall 2 is a multiplayer centric game. People may be like, yeah, it has a good campaign, but most people buying Titanfall are buying it for the multiplayer. And I also kind of find find it funny that Jedi Fallen Order was the lowest rated game out of that cluster, which is their most recent single player only game, which Titanfall 2, a multiplayer shooter, or Apex Legends, a multiplayer shooter, both of those games have a higher Metacritic than Jedi Fallen Order, so that's kind of funny. It's amazing what happens when you cherry pick examples to try and prove your point. It's almost like these games that have dedicated passion and development in it aren't these disgraceful side projects. These are your main AAA things that established you as a company. Yeah, Dreamcast guy, I hate to break it to you, but before there was Jedi Fallen Order and Titanfall or any of that, or even Mass Effect, EA Sports was their fucking moneymaker. That is what put EA in the position they're in right now, to be able to afford these quote unquote side projects. Oh, and also Battlefield. Why? Are you pooping on your own fan base? But what I wanted to scroll down here and show is the fact that what's kind of most interesting is the fact that people are, are sort of upset because uh, EA has fired a predominant chunk of their single player teams, even if they made profitable projects. Like right here, this is the company that shut down my studio and laid off 100 great developers because we were making a single player game. Also, if you break game rating scores down to a 10 point scale, most EA games are a solid six or seven. Not because the developers are bad, but because EA, the corporation, forces them to rush out games. Literally, literally they're game developers. Literally the people that make them money straight up saying that EA themselves does not know what makes a game good. Yeah, I mean, Viseral did make some good games. A lot of them didn't make a lot of money for EA, which is when they closed them down because, you know, believe it or not, it's not about making good games. It's making good money when it comes to a company like EA that has shareholders. But, you know, that's beside the point. I do think it is kind of an L they got rid of him. But look at the bright side. Now he's free to make whatever games he wants to and doesn't have to answer to EA anymore. I'm looking forward to seeing more of the Callisto protocol personally. I love Dead Space, so it looks pretty good. This is the most savage roast, like from a technical aspect, the fact that your people who are making your games are straight up saying, hey bro, maybe take a second, it just, just take a step back, take a breath, and finish your freaking games. Bro, this has got to be like one of the biggest internet overreactions I've seen in quite some time. I find this funny because honestly, not only is everybody just completely roasting them, but like even other game studios, this should have been in the drafts. Because like people doing the slap freaking Yakuza emote. My thought about this is that Electronic Arts is is a, is a symptom of a virus, which is the fact that right now co companies are so obsessed with quarterly profit margins. Like, gee, it's almost like that's the entire reason why they exist. We get to get a whole lecture about how video games are art now. Video games are art. Fuck. Video games are art. I, I have said this a million times till I'm blue in the face. My entire desk right now is covered in video games, retro stuff. I've got my Game Boy right here. I'm constantly playing. Right now, I'm playing through every single generation of Pokemon. All right, that's kind of based. Good choice, Dreamcast guy. Well, I say that with one caveat. As long as Gen 2 isn't your favorite. Video games are art, but they are also about making money. But you know what I've learned? The better your game is, the more filled with passion it is, the more time it's had in the oven to completely bake to perfection, the more profitable it is in the long run. 
Call of Duty, Madden, NBA 2K, FIFA, Battlefield, any Ubisoft open world game that you can think of, all those games would beg to differ. I mean, shit, even going back to Pokemon, which you're playing right now, like, I love the Pokemon games, don't get me wrong, but the amount of effort they put into those is, like, absolutely fucking non-existent at this point. Those new games look like absolute shit. Electronic Arts is bafflingly obsessed with making sure that a game comes out, that they sell you the deluxe edition, that they get you to buy that season pass. Even if the game sucks, they just want to make sure you paid as much money as possible for it. Wow, guys, welcome to Business 101. The goal of any company is to make money. You learn something new every day. They don't care about quality. They don't care about you. They care about stupid numbers to keep their investors happy, even if the products objectively are hot garbage. EA is a dumpster fire. I mean, straight up, it, it baffles me that they managed to be as profitable as they are because straight up, it, their contempt for the gamers is just surreal. Dude, it's not just EA. It's literally any gaming company you can think of in this industry, they all have the exact same mentality. Like, Sony isn't the shining angel. Microsoft doesn't give a fuck about you. Ubisoft doesn't give a fuck about you. Activision doesn't give a fuck about you. Square Enix doesn't give a fuck about you. The only reason you exist is to give them money in their minds. That is it. Now, whether they want to sugarcoat it and talk to you like they actually care about you on some level, you know, that's up to them. But at the end of the day, the only goal any of these companies have is to extract as much money out of your pocket as humanly possible with as little effort as possible. Maybe individual developers in these companies have a passion for games, but the companies themselves don't give a fuck. But what do you think about it? Are you happy about this? Is this as funny to you as it is to me? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and please like the video and keep dreaming. Also, go play some Pokemon. Old Pokemon is surprisingly good. By the way, yeah, this is my my analog pocket carrying case. Look at this. Old Pokemon is so shockingly great. I, I can't believe I have not played more old Pokemon. Well, I am proud the Dreamcast guy is correcting that mistake, because old Pokemon is fucking fire, dude. But I don't know. Maybe I'm off based on this one, but I don't really care. This was just kind of funny to me. A lot of people really just jumping the gun in the interpretation of this tweet, which, you know, maybe it was their intention to say, we hate single player games and we hate everyone that plays them. You know, that might be the case. I have no real idea. But the more likely scenario, at least in my mind, is the fact that they just kind of maybe worded it poorly and their intention was to imply that, oh, if the person only plays single-player games, you can't ever play with them, which I'm kind of thinking is more of the case. But you know what, guys? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I do want to say thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best, and I really do appreciate it. So with that said, I will catch you guys next time.